Hey guys, and welcome to a little bit of a course on how you can improve your writing efficiency um, when we're doing press releases. In this first video, we'll go over writing techniques and tricks that you can use to improve your speed in the press release and the blog section of the app. Um, these will tie into the second video on research, and then the third video will touch on the, the later modules. Hopefully by the end of this little course, you'll have picked up a tip or two that you can use to uh, speed up or improve your own writing process. The key to writing faster is knowing what you're going to be writing about. Obviously, you can't know exactly what you're going to say in a press release uh, before you start it, but you can have a general idea. We know the uh, the content will be in the region of 400 words or so, about 350 for the press release itself. So realistically, you only need around eight to 10 paragraphs in total, depending on their length. But here's the key thing. Six of them are already there for you to grab. Let's break this down further by looking at some of the key tent poles of a press release. Each PR we write will begin in a certain way and end in a similar style as well. So by using these two pieces of information, we can cut down the writing time. We know the press release section of an app needs to be newsworthy in order to get approved. After the recent updates to the style guide, we, uh, we focus this newsworthiness primarily on those first three paragraphs. The summary is a quick jab or a one-two punch, one or two sentences to get the main news angle across. The intro immediately follows that and is where you can provide a bit more relevant information. And the expansion comes after the first URL and there's a good chance to provide more information on the news angle and how it relates to the context of the field. Um, for our purposes, newsworthiness just means that we've got some new information. Something important has happened or is about to happen. And these three paragraphs give us the first set of building blocks because the opening three paragraphs are already there outlined for us. We've got the framework in place. Now, at the other end, we have some common trends that round out the press release. We'll usually have a quote, so let's get that in there quickly. It's also helpful to write a general info paragraph about the company uh, when, when you can. This could touch on their other services or uh, the resources they provide on their website, like guides or extra blogs, uh, products they sell, things like that. And you compare that with an about us paragraph. Um, most websites, most businesses have an about page where you can find a bit of background and history behind the company. And that can be quite helpful to get in the press release as well towards the end. So now all of a sudden, it's no longer eight or 10 paragraphs that we need to write. We've bookended the content with some key structural pieces. And now there's only a few things left to cover. Um, you can fill in the remaining few paragraphs with anything that you find through your research. If it's a particularly difficult PR where there isn't much info to go on, you can, um, you can usually use this kind of structural guide to find a way through the fog. The key thing to remember is that as long as you begin with a strong opening tied to the angle and the newsworthiness and end it neatly by rounding back to that angle, if you will, um, you can afford to cover other topics in the middle when there's not much to go on. So what about other approaches to press release content? Um, allowing yourself to be guided by structure doesn't mean you have to be formulaic. Let's take a look at some other strategies we can use to create interesting and engaging content. Um, I'd like to talk a bit about story structure. And what I mean by that is kind of the rules of fiction. Um, when, you're, when you're writing prose, when you're writing fiction, there are a bunch of kind of core concepts that are true across any story. You'll no doubt have heard of phrases like every story has a beginning, a middle and an end. Or you might be familiar with the three act structure. Something happens in the beginning. You're a wizard, Harry. Conflict occurs in the middle, raising the stakes, and by the end, we have the resolution. I am your father. The driving force behind these concepts is conflict. A story is that conflict. The great uh, screenwriter Aaron Sorkin likes to say that every story begins with intention and obstacle. Someone wants something, and then someone or something is stopping them from getting it. And that conflict is your story. So how does that apply to press releases? Well, we've got a character, the customer, the target audience of the press release. Um, most of the time, the thing we're writing about can provide a solution for that customer. 
So by drilling down into what obstacles or concerns or questions or conflicts that the, the typical customer is likely to face, um, we can create content that appeals to them. So what does this look like on the page? Well, after you're opening three paragraphs or even during them, if you like, you can, you can zone in on the character of the story. So here with this example, uh, we've got our character, small business owners, and we see the issue they're facing. They want to rank higher on Google. So how can the company we're writing for help this character to overcome their obstacle with their newly updated SEO services, of course, naturally. So with these two example paragraphs, you can see that we've got intention and obstacle in back-to-back -back paragraphs. Um, you can do this multiple times in a press release if you want, um, and you can apply it to any topic. You just have to think, what does the customer want? What's stopping them from getting it? What makes it difficult? And then how can the client solve these problems? You can let these questions inform your content. And uh, it's quite an effective way of, of filling out some of your paragraphs. Another lens that you can approach this through is uh, journalism structure. So in journalism, there is a simple tool that you can use to make your openings easier or to guide you through that opening paragraph. Um, in journalism, especially news journalism, there's a writing uh, technique, I suppose, that everyone uses, which is called the inverted pyramid. Um, and you can see it here on the screen. Um, the goal is to start with the most important information first, pack your opening, um, in our case, the summary in the first paragraph of a press release, with the most important details. These can include a product name, a location, uh, the target audience and any major keywords, of course, associated with your angle. And we can borrow a lot from this approach. Uh, it's important for, for two reasons, really. Firstly, uh, people have a very short attention span. As you can see, there have been uh, studies which show that people read online in a kind of F shape. They pay more attention to the first couple of paragraphs, then lose interest and they start to scan. So getting those core details in early means you feed them the most important information. And secondly, a big one for us is that Google pays more attention to the keywords at the top of the press release. Okay, so we've covered a few different strategies there. Hopefully you found it helpful. Um, I've included a worksheet with some examples of how you can use these techniques to prep your page and make writing faster. So give it a look. And if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. <laughs>